There's just tons of these guys along the floor. I've had a spawn in our 201 tank. We're gonna be breeding my turquoise rainbows, the Praycox, dwarf neon rainbows, and the Bosmanis. We've got a pair of these blue-black rams that I bred. I'm still experimenting with different ways to hatch out these pleco eggs. As you can see some of the eggs in those mops. Everything's looking pretty good. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a few things. Primarily, the thing I wanna do is breed some of our rainbow fish. Now, I haven't bred my rainbow fish for a couple of months, probably about four months, and I've been selling quite a few on my website and to a couple of shops, and my stocks come way down. Like, I have basically none left. They're really, really popular for some reason in my area right now, and I think it's just because it's summer. I think in winter they have a hard time getting them, or maybe it's the reverse. <laughs> I'm not really too sure. I think today I wanna to breed pretty much all of the rainbow fish, and I'm gonna be taking you through the process of how I do that. I'm actually not gonna spawn them today. It's a bit late in the day, and and I can't really be bothered setting it up. So we're gonna leave that for tomorrow, but there's a bunch of other things that's happened in the fish room since I last saw you. I've had a spawn in our 201 tank, and I had a spawn in my L397 tank. Now, the L397 tank, the male ate the eggs. I'm a little bit frustrated about that. In our L201 tank, the male actually kicked the eggs out. When he did that, there's a little bit of damage to one of the eggs. I think it's not gonna hatch and he killed one of the wrigglers. But we do have about 10 eggs that are okay, so I'm hoping that we will be able to hatch those out. All of the fish that you saw in the last episode are doing fantastic, and I'll give you guys an update on them. I'm gonna quickly grab the camera, show you some stuff that's happening in the fish room, and then tomorrow we can go ahead and spawn those rainbow fish. Okay, so first off, I wanna start over on this fry system and show you some of the things that are going on inside of these tubs. For those of you guys who don't know, I do use Dean from Dean's Fish Room's method of raising out fish by hatching them out in these tubs and suspending them above my four foot aquarium. And that way, all the fish have heaps of water volume for growing out and we don't have ammonia spikes inside of these tubs. I think I'm actually gonna switch over to my phone and show you what's inside of these tubs because my camera's a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So we're now on the phone, so the audio is probably gonna be a little bit different, but. If we come over to this first tub and have a look in here, up the back of this tote, we have now moved those little L201 eggs into here. So we've now got the little fry inside of this container. So you can see them all up the back there. It's a little bit hard to get a close look because they're all hiding underneath the sponge. They're all there. They haven't really developed their L201 colors, but we haven't lost any, so we've got all 10 still. And they're doing fantastic. So I'll keep you guys updated with their progress over the coming weeks as they continue to develop and turn into little fish. In the container next door, we also have some more plecos. In here we have our little cocktail mix of plecos and we have the L333s and we have about six L397s. These guys have all been doing good, they've been developing well in here. You can see they've all got their yolk sacs still so they're still a little bit away from eating, probably about four or five days away from eating. But they're all doing good, they love to hide underneath the sponges because it's nice and dark and it makes them feel safe but we haven't lost any of these guys. I'm super excited to see how they look when they're juveniles because they look so pretty all of these plecos when they're juveniles. As they get older they kind of lose a little bit of their luster but at that juvenile our stage they look the best so I'm really excited to see that again. In the tub next door to that we have our L397s that have now started eating. So these are some fry that we hashed out in the last video as well. I'm trying to get these guys to move forward so you can get a bit of a better look. You can see they're all little L397s. They've got their little tiger pleco pattern and they look really cute as well. I've been feeding them rapashi and baby branch root and they've all been eating that and as far as I know we still have all 10 in here so hopefully we don't have any losses from here on but they're all doing great. Now that's all the plecos that are over on this fry system at the moment. If we come over here, I wanna show you what's going on with our royal whiptails. You can see we still have heaps of them. There is a few skinny ones in here, and I have lost about five or six that I know of. Now, the reason I think that I lost those guys is because overnight, the auto feeding system turned off. The reason these guys are so hard to raise, I think is because they need continual eating, and they're really dumb, so they don't really hunt out their food. It needs to be right underneath their nose and I think that we should give them some baby brine shrimp. That might be interesting because they kind of jump around and eat that stuff. So we might go ahead and do that and see how they go. Okay, so I just went and harvested some of my baby brine shrimp and we can go ahead and give them a feed. You can see how they eat. So we'll go ahead and just squirt some of this in here. Probably grab a few of them. There we go. Now we can have a little bit of a look and watch these guys eat this up. So you can see they get all excited, they run around, their bellies get all orange and they fill up with this baby brine shrimp. Now this is definitely the best food to feed them, in my opinion, because it's so full of protein and it makes them grow so quickly. 
and it's something about that jerking around motion of the baby brine shrimp in the water that you can see. It just entices them to eat. And then also in the container next door, we do have a tiny batch of baby black rams. I took these guys out because they are black rams and they are in very high demand in my area. So it is worth taking them out. There's only about 30 in this batch, but they're all eating some baby brine shrimp as well. And they're running around and picking it up and having a little bit of their dinner. These are all a product of that auto feeding system. The auto feeding system has been taking care of all of these fish except for the plecos. So these whiptails here and these rams here. And it's made the job so easy. So if you haven't checked that video out, I'd definitely recommend watching it if you're interested in breeding any of these fish because it's helped me tremendously and it's super reliable. So everyone over here is doing fantastic and I'm really, really pleased with how everything's going over here. Okay, so I've now switched back over to my normal camera, so that's why the audio has changed. But we're back over here at our l 201 tank. And if you have a look down here, you can see our l 201s are doing great. We've got this male in here. Now this male was the one that bred and had the second batch of eggs. And if we come up here and have a look in this cis tumbler, you can see here we have the clutch of eggs. Now for those of you who watched the last video, you would know that I struggled a little bit with fungus growing on the eggs when I took them out of the cave. Now I had to take these guys out, like I said before, because the male kicked them out and he did damage one of the eggs, which you're not going to be able to pick up on camera, but I don't think that egg's going to hatch. Now, I'm playing around with a little bit of an experiment here, and I've left the eggs in the original water that they were laid in, so I've got the eggs in the original tank, and I'm hoping that we won't have any more fungal issues because these eggs should stay good. This should hatch tomorrow, so there shouldn't be enough time for fungus to grow on them. It is annoying that the males kicked them out a couple of times, but that's just because he's a young male, and he should shape up in the next year or so. It's just something annoying that we have to deal with right now. These guys should continue breeding over the summer. They're really frisky. There's quite a few females that are full of eggs. I think we should go ahead and give these guys a feed because they always come out and they're really fun to feed. So I've just got this little cube of blood worms. We'll drop this in and we'll let it sink. You can see these blood worms are gonna fall down to the bottom. And we already have a customer. Oh, well, he's gone back. We've also got these red lizard whiptails in this tank, which are growing out. And I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to breed these guys next year. But here come some of the blood worms. You'll see all these fish will start coming out to the front. We still have the original six plecos that we bought about a year and a half ago. So I haven't lost any of these guys and yeah, they've all grown up fantastic and they've already started to breed and everything's gone really well with this tank. That doesn't normally happen with fish and when it does happen, I'm really, really glad and happy about it. But got a few guys eating some of them over there. So they don't really like my camera too much, but they're gonna have to put up with it for now if they wanna come get a bite to eat. So I'm not too sure. I think these might actually be females here. They don't look too plump. There's someone that's really plump up above this female over here is super plump, so she might be the next one to lay eggs. And if you have a look in this tank, this is the male that laid eggs earlier on. And I was about to record it, but this morning I came in and he'd eaten those eggs. So there goes a couple hundred dollars worth of eggs. Again, this isn't about the money. I'm not worried about that. It's just frustrating when you spend so much time trying to breed these fish and they eat their eggs. He had a nice little cluster of eggs that he ate, and I'm hoping he's gonna shape it up and stop doing that in the future. But these guys have been trapping all week and have been super frisky, so I'm not too worried about it. And I do have about 16 of these guys in grow out. These are the L397s I've been breeding. They've been doing good besides eating their eggs, which is very frustrating. I probably won't give them a feed. These guys are really susceptible to bloat. I kind of feed these guys alternate days so I don't bloat them too much because they're really greedy and I haven't bloated one before but a lot of people have been warning me about it. They're very greedy and especially feeding them high protein food which they don't get often in the wild. Probably isn't a good idea to do every day so I feed them alternate days and yeah they seem to do well with that. Another thing we can have a look at is over in this tank we have a bunch of little baby peppermint bristlenose that we stripped in the last video. So yeah you can see these guys up the front grazing on the glass and all that biofilm and there's hundreds in this tank. What I like to do with these guys is when they're done being hatched in the cave by the male I just take them to one of these two foot tanks, dump them in there with an Indian almond leaf and a couple green beans and they seem to do really well. You can see it's a little bit cloudy in here, but there's just tons of these guys along the floor grazing consistently all day and eating that biofilm growing on the Indian almond leaves and eating the green beans that I've thrown in there. And then I also like to throw a bit of rapashi in there to get some protein into them because it helps them to grow really quickly. But there's probably about 200 of these guys in this tank. I had two quite large batches. I'm really, really happy about it. I've just been breeding so many of these guys in the fish room. And if anyone is interested, there is a link down below where I do have a few of these guys available on my website. 
so you can go and pick up your own if you are in Australia. But that's what's been going on in this peppermint bristle nose tank. And the final thing I wanted to show you is if you come over to this tank, you can see we've got a pair of these blue-black rams that I bred from a pair in this fish room quite a while ago. These are actually the second generation of blue-black rams. You can see they've got a massive cloud of these fry. Now, this is a little bit of a funny story, and excuse me for the poor quality, this tank's very dark and I basically put the camera on night vision. The way we got these fry is these parents are very, very good parents, and I had two pairs of these rams in here, and I knew they were laying eggs, but I didn't know how many eggs they were laying, and I kind of just leave my pears in here for a bit to grow out until they have quite large batches of eggs and then I'll take them out. When they're this size, they normally lay about 10 eggs. But these guys obviously laid quite a few hundred and there was two pairs in here and they did a great job keeping the other pair away from the eggs. And there was a huge cloud of eggs in here when I came in one morning and I was just like, what the heck's going on in here? And the other pair was up the top of the tank hiding from this pair and I decided to obviously take the other pair out. And I've just left these guys in here with their eggs and their fry and they've been all eating baby brown shrimp and they've just been growing fantastic. So I might actually go ahead and give these guys a squirt of baby brown shrimp so you can watch their meat as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and grab a nice squirt of this baby brown shrimp out. Squirt it in there. Okay, so you can see all that baby brown shrimp going in and the fry will just swarm around and their bellies are all gonna go orange and they're just gonna eat heaps of this stuff. This is one of my favorite ways to breed rams. I wasn't planning on breeding them like this anymore, but we did get a surprise batch and it's always exciting to see it. I actually might keep breeding the rams like this if they continue to do it well because it's just so easy for me. Like I don't have to do anything for it. I just take the fry out, raise them up in a separate tank and it makes the process super easy. You can see those fry are all eating it. Their bellies are all kind of already full. It only takes two or three baby brunch, I guess, to fill their stomachs up. That's what's going on over in this tank. Really, really cool seeing this kind of stuff in the fish room. This is genuinely a highlight of the hobby, especially seeing this many fry. It's just fantastic. So I guess we'll catch up in the morning and we will go ahead and we'll breed some of those rainbow fish. Okay, so it's now the following day, and today is the day where we're gonna start spawning some of our rainbow fish. Now, a few things have also happened overnight. That's normally what happens in this fish room, just things are constantly breeding and spawning and things like that. So I'm gonna give you guys some updates after I'm done spawning the rainbows, or setting them up, I guess. There was a few ways I was gonna breed these guys. The first way I was gonna do it was I was gonna set them up in their own tank with a ratio of males to females, probably like two males and five females. Set them up in a tank by themselves, like a spawning tank leave them in there for a week to spawn in that mop and then take the mop out and move the fish back to a tank. I've actually got all of my rainbow fish up above my pleco tanks and I thought that maybe I could just breed them in the pleco tanks like I used to. It'd probably just make the process super easy because all I'd have to do is throw a spawning mop in there let them spawn for a week and then take it out. The reason I didn't want to do that is because I do have snails in those tanks and I know the snails will eat the eggs that are laid in the mop. But I think these guys will lay quite a few eggs so I'm not too worried about them eating all of the eggs. And We don't need like thousands of these guys. I just want to breed a few of them to get my stock back up and to show you guys exactly how I do it. So we're going to be breeding my turquoise rainbows. We're also going to be breeding the praycox dwarf neon rainbows and the bosmanis. What I'm going to do is just simply throw a spawning mop in each of the tanks show you guys in a couple of days how many eggs are in there. I guess later on what we'll do is bring them out. I'll show you how I hatch them because I normally hatch them in like little containers and I just manually feed them. They're pretty easy to feed. They don't need to eat constantly. The only thing that's challenging about them is they're small. So I guess let me go and show you guys the rainbow fish that we're gonna breed. Okay, so we'll come over to this tank first and in this tank we have my Bosmani rainbows. So you can see in here, we have I think about eight to nine of these guys and these are just some Bosmanis. So they don't have much color right now because it's kind of part the peak of their color during the day. For those of you who don't know, rainbow fish in the morning have fantastic color, like some of the best color that I've seen on any fish. And that's just the males like showing off and trying to get the females to spawn because the way these guys spawn is pretty much every single morning they lay eggs. Right as the lights come on in the first hour and a bit to two hours, they lay eggs. And the males will just get this beautiful color and they just look fantastic and they'll court the females into breeding and they'll do that every morning. Now, it takes about seven or eight days for the eggs to hatch. I think it might even take up to 10 days, but that's why we have to leave the mop in there for seven or eight days, because what we're gonna do is get the most eggs out of that mop. So there is normally a differentiation in size between the fry, but that's not normally a problem. The way you sex these guys is the males are a lot bigger and look a lot more prominent. So this here would be a male, and the females are a little bit more slim and fat and have a little bit less color. So that's a female there, and then, there's an obvious male. That's an obvious male in the middle of the screen there. So these guys are probably my favorite ones in the room. And they're in here with these leopard frog plecos down below. You can see them there. So this is just a small colony that I have growing out. 
So we're gonna be breeding these guys today. In a tank next door, we have these beautiful Praycox rainbows. So these are the dwarf neon rainbows. You can see they're quite different, but they're also very similar to the Bosmanis that I just showed you before. The males have like a red tail and the females have like a yellow tail. The body shape's also different. These guys are very easy to breed. They spawn the most in my opinion and they stay very small. Like this is the max size. So my hands there for comparison. So these are quite good for like those medium sized tanks or nano tanks. And I think they look fantastic. They're really good at schooling. I have quite a few tanks with these guys in them. So I'm gonna spawn two tanks of these guys today. But these are the Praycox. You can see just how good they look. I've actually bred all of these myself. And now I'm continuing on the lines that I've been breeding over the past couple of years. All these rainbow fish breed the exact same. And these guys are actually in with my L46 colony. This is a smaller colony I have, five of them in here. And these are the youngest ones that I have, but I'm growing these guys out to breed, hopefully next year. We also down the end here have a small, small colony of these turquoise rainbows. I actually have a few of these guys growing out just in case something happens to this breeding colony. I originally started out with six and I lost two along the way. So I'm now down to four and there's one male and three females. Now these guys do breed. I'm not gonna get many eggs out of these, I don't think, just because of the lack of quantity in this tank. They're in here with the older group of Zebs that you can see down below. But we're also gonna be spawning these today. They don't look that great now. I mean, they look pretty good. But in the morning, the males just look fantastic. They are really a special type of fish. My mate Don has a beautiful rainbow fish tank that I can flash up an image of now. And he has some of these turquoise rainbows in there and he also has some Bosmanis in there. And they just look fantastic. Anyways, let me show you guys how I'm gonna breed them. So if you come over here, you can see down here, I have some of these, which are spawning mops. Now this is just some yarn and there's like a million videos on YouTube on how to make these. They're very easy. It's just a piece of cork up above. And what this does is it'll float in the tank and suspend down and it looks like roots. And the fish go ahead and they spawn inside of this mop and this will be full of eggs. Now, what I like to do when I'm done using these is dry them out completely, just for sanitary reasons, because it means that they can't continue to hold planarias and snails in them. And normally they're really fresh and you'll get more eggs if you do that. So what I'm gonna do is add one of these to each of the tanks that I wanna do some breeding in. You can see I've got a white one here. They're still spawning the white one, a darker one here, and then two of these really like green ones here. So what we'll go ahead and do is grab them, put them down here. And what we're gonna do is in each of the tanks that we wanna breed them in, we're just gonna float them up above. You can see all that yarn is gonna to start to sink and the rainbow fish should spawn in, in the morning. We'll go ahead and we'll also do that to the other tanks that we want breeding in. So we'll come over here to the L46 tank with our Praycox in it and we'll throw that one in there. We'll grab another one. This can go in the turquoise rainbow tank. And then we'll throw one more up here with this other small group of these Praycox rainbows. So we'll have two mops of Praycox. We'll let that sink overnight and hopefully when I come in in the morning we'll have some spawning in these mops. So I'll try and record that in the morning. But we'll leave these in here for a week and then we can try and hatch these out. What I'm gonna use to hatch these guys out is if you come over here, we've got these tubs. These are the Kmart tubs that I use for tons of breeding. What I'm gonna do is throw a spawning mop in each one of these tubs. So I'm gonna have like four tubs. Set up on this rack, you can see I've got some little airline tubings as well. I'll show you guys in more detail in the next video how I'll exactly do it. But we'll throw the eggs in the spawning mops in each of these tubs. They'll hatch out. We'll start feeding them infusoria over a week and then we'll transfer them over to our fry system over here and they'll go into a container and we'll try and link up the auto feeding system possibly. But like I said, they're not very hard to raise up. I hope I'm not jinxing myself here, but they're pretty easy fish to breed. So I'm hoping I can show you guys exactly how to do it in a really simple way. So all we have to do now is leave our rainbow fish to breed for the week and they'll lay eggs every morning. Next week we can come in, take the mops out and start the hatching process. So it's literally that easy. You just need males and females in a tank, a spawning mop and you're good to go. Now, while we wait for those mops to fill up with eggs, we're probably not gonna be able to do that in this vlog. We'll wait for the next vlog. I wanted to show you guys some stuff that's happened overnight. The first thing is some bad news over in our L201 tank. You can see down here, our parents are doing fantastic. There's no problems with the adults, but as you guys would remember, we pulled out the eggs from that male's cave because he was kicking the wrigglers out. And you can see we have a few that hatched out, but for the most part, these guys just didn't hatch out well. They had some hatching issues, like the fish hatched out, but they couldn't get out of that Chorian layer on the egg. And yeah, there was just a few issues. So we lost about half the spawn to that. And it looks like there's quite a few dodgy fry in here. Now, 
I tested the water and that cage was just a little bit too high for these eggs to hatch in. It was at about 50 parts per million and we really want that to be as close to zero. So there's no calcification of the eggs. That's just a quick lesson for everyone here. Learn from my mistakes, try and get your water right before you try and hatch these eggs out. The reason these fish spawned is because of that temperature drop, but not because of the water parameters. So next time I spawn these guys, I want to get some RO water in here to drop that KH and that water hardness. And hopefully we have more hatching in the next spawn. So that's a little bit frustrating, but the male's looking still really keen to breed and I'm sure these guys are going to continue to lay eggs. The next thing I wanted to show you is over in this L270 breeding tank. I think we have another spawn. So you can see out here, this female's pretty beaten up and skinny. Now she was actually trapped by this male in this cave. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to freak him out. I've shined a torch in there and I didn't really see anything, but he does seem to be protecting something up the back of the cave. She came out this morning and I'm assuming up the back of that cave there is some eggs. We'll see how that goes. I know that these guys have been eating their eggs before and in the last episode I did take them out because I didn't know whether there were eggs up the back. So this time I'm just going to leave them. Hopefully the male does a good job hatching them out and I'm just going to try and let these plecos learn how to do their job properly and not intervene as much as I have been. They are all young fish and they should be learning how to raise their eggs up. Hopefully we do have a spawn. I'm like 99% sure there is eggs up the back of that cave but we're just going to leave this male to do its job and if he eats the eggs he eats the eggs there's not a lot we can do about it now mind the dirty tank but over here this is one of my peppermint bristlenose colonies this peppermint bristlenose colony has made thousands of peppermints maybe not thousands but definitely a couple hundred and this morning i came in and this male was on a spawn of eggs now there's actually two males in this tank there's one male that's really good at raising his eggs and there's another male that's really good at eating caviar. I saw there was a super plump female in here yesterday, like really plump, I'm talking massive. And I was kind of hoping she'd go to the good male, but of course she went to the bad male and he already started to kick out quite a few eggs when I came in this morning. So I took the eggs out and it's a massive spawn, like it's huge. So I've got the eggs up here in this bucket. Now I'm hatching them out with some methylene blue and I'm not too sure how we're gonna go hatching them out. I think they're gonna be okay. I'm still experimenting with different ways to hatch out these pleco eggs. I haven't really come to any conclusion that's gonna work. I'm gonna keep my eye on them. Because there is methylene blue in here, I don't think we'll have fungal issues and hopefully we can hatch them out and move them into a grow out tank and everything goes smoothly but that's some more good news in the fish room and lastly here's a little update on our black rams these are the ones we left in with the parents earlier on and you can see how quickly they're growing so I'm gonna strip these guys off camera today and put them into a grow out tank but you can see just how many there are there's like heaps of them in here and I think I've got to set up a few more pairs of these black rams to keep my production up because I've been breeding a lot of blue rams but not as many black rams as I'd like um, and now that I've got that auto feeding system I'd really like to capitalize on the black rams I also quickly wanted to interrupt this video to show you guys something that I've been working on for a little bit. I thought that because this video is about rainbow fish, that it'd be pretty appropriate to show you guys my new rainbow fish merch. I've been working on these designs for a bit and you can see here we've got some mugs, hoodies and shirts. We've got the over the rainbow fish design and I personally think it's really cute. These shirts are available in the link down below. This is just a really good way to support the channel. As a lot of you guys would know, I do make a large majority of my money from selling fish, especially to people watching my YouTube videos, but a lot of my audience is overseas and can't buy my fish. If you want to support the channel, the link's down below. Again, don't feel like you have to do anything at all, you guys watching these videos is more than enough anyways back to the video okay so before this video ends i wanted to quickly take a second to show you guys these fish spawning i came in the following morning and had a look in some of our rainbow fish tanks now these fish are most prevalent in their breeding in the first one to two hours of the day and you'll see the males courting the females like you can see in this video and what they do is they entice the females to come over to the spawning mop and that's basically how they breed. I saw a lot of breeding in my Dwarf Neon Rainbow tank and as well as the Bosmanis. I didn't see a lot of action in the Turquoise tank but I did see some eggs in that mop. So if you come over to some of these mops you can see some of the eggs in those mops and everything's looking pretty good. So in the next video in this series we'll hatch out these eggs and I'll show you guys exactly how to do that and the following video after that we'll raise up those eggs into little babies. Thank you so much for watching this video everyone. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.